Okay, so in this video we're going to introduce the concept of a Green's theorem of the plane. So basically what we have is some closed curve C that basically creates a simple domain D, which is just an area on the XY plane. And the idea behind Green's theorem is that if you have a vector field, which is just a two-dimensional vector field, which has a com component fx and fy, you can evaluate the line integral of that vector field by basically evaluating a double integral on that closed region D. So what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, a cross of the partial derivatives, you're going to take the difference and then integrate it on the area D, and that is going to give you the value of the line integral. So this is another really powerful theorem, and we're going to see how it works through an example. So in this case, we're given this integral here, and the idea is to evaluate it on the curve C, which is defined as the as a unit circle. So we have our curve C, which is transverse anti-clockwise. And now what we're going to do is, instead of evaluating directly as we normally would by basically writing it in this form, and then just finding some position vectors that we can relate it to, we're going to evaluate it using Green's theorem. So, if this is our function f of x, and this here is our function f of y, then according to Green's theorem, we can write another function, which is the difference of the two. So, how about we start with fy, and we differentiate it with respect to x. So, this is going to give us, well, if we differentiate with respect to x, this just becomes 2y plus 2. And then we're going to get the function f of x differentiated with respect to y. And let's see what that gives us. We have 2y minus 7. So now, in order to evaluate this line integral, all we need to do is cast it in the form of a double integral. So we're going to have the following. We're going to have this goes in first. So 2y plus 2 minus... 2y minus minus 7, which is plus 7, dA over the region D, which is the area that is enclosed by this curve. Let's call it D. And then this becomes the double integral of the area D. And now we have 9 over here. So basically this and that are going to cancel out, and this is going to be with respect to dA. Now what we can do is, we can write this in the following form. We can write this as 9 times the double integral on the region D, dA. And can you guess what the value of this is going to be without actually putting in any limits or any substitutions? Well, it turns out that this expression right here is just the area of the domain D. Because we know from multivariable calculus that the area of some domain D is just represented by this double integral. And what is the area of a circle? Well, it is just pi times the radius square. And the radius is 1, which means that we're going to have 9 times pi. So this is our final answer. We just saw that we evaluated this line integral very, very easily simply by using Green's theorem. And then it turned out that it was just 9 times the radius of the circle. So how amazing is that? We only needed a, probably just two steps, and that's it. We arrived at the answer. Now, how do we actually know this is correct? Well, we could try to integrate this using the conventional method. And in order to do that, we need to choose a, we need to choose a position vector that parameterizes C. So let's do the long method. In this case, because we're dealing with polar coordinates, we're going to choose cosine of t. So remember, the, the, the radius of the circle is 1. So we're going to have sine of t here. So that's the parameterization in terms of polar coordinates. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have the limits are going to go. So the limits for t, in this case, are going to go from 0 to 2 pi because we're completing t is the angle of rotation. We're completing a full rotation here. Now, the next step here is, of course, we know that this is going to be x. This is going to be y. 
So in order to get dx and dy, which is what we need for this line integral here, all we need to do is the following. We're going to have dr, and now we're going to get dx, dy, and what is this going to be equal to? Well, it turns out that dx, so let's differentiate dx with respect to time first. Differentiate this, this becomes minus sine t. And then differentiate y with respect to t. This is going to become cosine of t. So now if we rearrange for dx, and we get the following. We're going to have minus sine t dt. And then cosine of t times dt. So now we have exactly what we need. We have dx and dy. So now all we need to do is to plug everything back in here. Uh, now of course this is going to get a little bit more complicated, but hopefully we're going to get the exact same answer as before. So we're going to rewrite the integral here. We start with y squared minus 7y dx. plus the following integral, 2xy plus 2x dy. So 2xy plus 2x dy. And all we need to do now is just substitute everything in. So we have the limits from 0 to 2 pi. Here we're going to have sine square of t minus 7 sine t. Now the element dx is going to be minus sine t dt and we're going to add to that the following we have 2 times cosine t sine t plus 2 cosine of t and then that is going to be multiplied by the element dy which is cosine t dt so let's expand this out. This is going to become 0 to 2 pi. And here we're going to have minus sine cubed t plus 7 sine squared t. And then on this side we're going to have plus 2 cosine squared t sine t plus 2 cosine squared t and everything with respect to dt. Okay, so let's see how we can integrate this now. So we're going to start off with this one. So sine cubed t, well, how can we actually reduce that? Well, one neat trick that I'd like to consider, so let's just do this one here. dt from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to rewrite this as the integral of sine squared t times sine t. And now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this by some other expression. So the one that I'm going to pick is the one that relates cosine squared to sine squared via 1. So we're going to have the following. 1 minus cosine squared t dt from 0 to 2 pi. Alright, and now what's going to happen is, oh, I forgot the sine t on this side. dt. Let's pick a substitution variable, so let u equals to cosine of t, such that du becomes sine of t dt. And now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this in the form 1 minus u squared times du, 0 to 2 pi. And then this is going to be u minus u cubed over 3. And now we substitute back in by our function. So cosine of t minus cosine cubed t over 3, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, and we know that cosine t, in this case, we're going to have the exact same value at 0 and 2 pi. So what this means is that we're going to get the following. 
when cosine is zero then that becomes one so we're gonna have one minus one over three same happens for two pi so we're just gonna have one and then we're gonna subtract to that we're gonna subtract one minus one over three and then it turns out that this is going to be zero so this whole integral is going to be zero now for the other integrals it's a little bit more straightforward so I'm just going to perform some substitutions so let's do we're gonna reduce the integral because we know this term is gonna turn out to be zero so now we have 7 over 2 times 1 minus cosine of 2t so I'm gonna perform some more trigonometric substitutions here and then here I'm going to get let's put this one next to it so we're gonna have plus 1 so 2 over 2 1 plus cosine of 2t and then in the end we have plus 2 cosine squared sine t and then all of this with respect to time to the parameter t all right, so let's see what we can do here. Well, we can do some grouping. We notice that we're going to have 7 halves, so 7 on 2 plus 1. So that's going to be 9 on 2. Here we're going to have cosine of 2t minus 7 on 2. So basically we're going to have minus 5 on 2 cosine of 2t. And let me just check that's correct. So we have 7 over 2, 2 over 2, and yeah, it should be this. And now this one stays the same. All right, so let's see what else we can get from this. So we can start integrating now. This is going to be 9 over 2t minus. 5 on 4 sine of 2t and then this here let's see what it becomes we're gonna have let's see okay so this is going to become minus 2 on 3 cosine of cosine to the power 3, 3t and you can check this by differentiating this so this is going to get you back to this expression now you take it from 0 to 2 pi alright let's see what we have so what we notice at first is that we're taking limits over a periodic periodic boundary so the, the the values of sine of 2t and of cosine of cube t are going to be exactly the same at both of those so we already know that this is going to be zero for both of those so we can get rid of that now we're going to have the following we have 9 times 2 pi over 2 so that becomes 9 pi and we're gonna have minus 2 over 3 so cosine of t evaluated at 2 pi that's 1 so that's just that and then we're gonna subtract now this is going to be 0 and we're gonna put 0 in here so this becomes minus 2 over 3 and now what we notice is that this becomes a plus so basically plus here and this is going to cancel out with that one and then in the end we're just going to obtain 9 of pi so this is exactly the same thing that we obtained using Green's theorem but notice that in Green's theorem we barely even completed two lines of of our solution before getting the right answer whereas here by doing it using the conventional method we needed several lines in fact two three four five six just like a little bit more than seven lines just to complete that so clearly Green's theorem offers a significant advantage for when it comes to closed uh, contours so this is something that we're going to be using a little bit more in the future to simplify problems for us but this is hope this video has hopefully shown you that Green's theorem is quite powerful and it's a very useful tool for evaluating line integrals of vector fields